Question 9A part 1 is asking us to find how long it took to fly from B to C. Give your answer to correct to the nearest minute. So it's talking about time here. So this question is going to need our knowledge of our distance, speed and time triangle. And let's fill in a bit of information onto the diagram. So it tells us first of all that it travels from A for two hours at a constant speed of 420 kilometers until it hits B. So that means that the total distance so from A to B is going to be uh, 420 kilometers multiplied by two is giving me 840 kilometers. So I'm just gonna mark that onto my diagram. It's 840 kilometers from A to B. The next piece of information I also know is that this angle here at B must add up to 180 degrees because it's a straight line angle. So I'm just going to mark in the angle internally here, which is going to be 160 degrees because 180 take away my 20 is leaving me with 160 degrees. And that means I can fill in the third remaining angle in this triangle, which is going to be 180 degrees minus the 8.57 plus the 160 degrees, which is giving me an angle of 11.43 degrees. So that's as much information as I know. Um, coming down now, let's do a little bit of work here. I'm going to find, well, what's it asking us to do? Find uh, how long it took to fly from B to C. So basically, I'm getting that length there. So I'm going to use either my sine rule or cosine rule. I'm going to use my sine rule, which is from my log tables, A over sine A equals B over sine B. Now we can go other ways with this question. Sine rule would be, or cosine rule would be fine. Let's just use the sine rule to keep it simple. The side I need is BC, which is along here. So I'm going to call that my A, so my BC is my length I'm trying to find, and that is over the sine of 8.57. So think about this, the angle is opposite the side, and the side, op or the angle opposite BC is the angle A, which is 8.57. So sine 8.57, and I'm gonna match that up with one other side. Well, I know the length of A to B, which is 840 kilometers, and I'm going to put that over the angle of sine of 11.43 degrees. Now I could have went with the 1450 over the angle of sine 160, but it's the same thing. Solving this now, I'm going to cross multiply my two fractions. And that is giving me sine 11.43 multiplied by BC. So I'm just gonna keep that as is. You can turn them into decimals if you want. I'm going to leave them in their original form here just to make life a bit easier is equal to 840 times sine of 8.57. Again, you can multiply them out. I'm going to divide both sides then by sine 11.43 to get the length from B to C. So that's 840 times my sine of 8.57 all over sine of 11.43 degrees. And I'm just going to go to my calculator and work that out. And that is giving me BC equals two. 631.65, which is 632, we round it to the nearest, and that is kilometers, so 632 kilometers. Now the question though isn't asking for the distance from B to C, it's actually asking us to find the time taken to get to B to C. Now we know though from our distance, speed, and time triangle in order to get time. Time is found by dividing the distance by the speed. So in order to calculate the time here, I'm going to take my distance, which is 632 kilometers, divided by the speed. Now the speed is constant at 420 kilometers. That's given in the top here in the question. So when I divide that out, I get time equals to um, 1.5 which is 1.5 hours. And the question said, give it to the nearest minute. So I'm gonna write it as 90 minutes. 0.5 is standing for 30 minutes. So 60 plus 30 is 90 minutes. Part B is asking us, the average fuel consumption of the plane is 3.8 liters per second. 
and the fuel capacity of the plane is 100,000 litres, show that the plane will be able to complete the journey from A to B to C and directly back to A at the speed of 420 kilometers per hour. So it's assuming that it's a constant speed of 420 kilometers. We don't need to worry too much about that. Let's just uh, write down what we know. So let's focus in on the actual total length of the journey, first of all. So I'm going to write down the total length of journey, or the total distance, in other words. So to go from A to B, it was... Um, two hours again that's given at the top of the question we figured that out by multiplying uh or sorry no they did give it two hours so we know that uh what's that that's 120 minutes if we're working in minutes the time from b to c is from part one up above which is 1.5 hours which we found out to be 90 minutes that was my answer to part one up above and now from A to C, what's happening from A to C? Well, the distance from A to C is 1,450 kilometers. And if I divide that by the speed, 420, again, I'm focusing in here on my distance, speed, and time triangle, and I'm trying to find time, which is found by dividing distance by speed. So if I divide 1,450 by 420, I get roughly, 3.45 hours which is the same as about 207 minutes give or take so if i calculate the total length of the journey in minutes i'm getting 417 minutes so that's the total length of the flight the question says though that the plane travels 3.8 liters per second so i need to turn that 417 minutes um, into seconds, so I'm multiplying by 60 because we know there's 60 seconds in a minute, which is 25020, 25,020 seconds. Now your answer might be slightly different given that I round the distance or the time taken from A to C to be 3.54. So let's look at the consumption now of the airplane. So the consumption, the total consumption is the 25,020 seconds. I'm gonna multiply that by 3.8 liters because it uses 3.8 liters per second. So therefore, my flight is taking 95,076 liters of fuel to complete the flight. And the question is asking us, show that the plane will be able to complete the flight. Well, it is because um, since 95,076 liters is less than the 100,000 liters that the flight airplane can hold. Therefore, it is able to complete the journey. Just make sure we state our conclusion in this question. So they want you to show it but you must uh, state your, your logic there. So because the 95,000 liters is less than 100,000 liters that's on the airplane, the airplane can complete the journey. Okay, scrolling on down. Part B, the voltage of a certain alternating current is given by this function. Find the period and the range. Okay, so my function here, if we just write it out in terms of A and B, so my A is my 110 root two sine, um, B times T. My B is standing for the uh, number in front of the variable, the T. So in order to get my period, I divide a full rotation, so 2 pi, and I divide that by my B. And in this case, my B is 120 pi. So 2 pi divided by 120 pi is giving me 100, or sorry, 1 over 60. So that's my period uh, for this question. Uh, so one over 60. Um, the range then is found from taking the modulus of the A, so negative and positive A. So my range is going from minus 110 root two. So the 110 root two is basically my amplitude. Um, so minus 110 root two up to positive 110 root two. Uh, that's it. That's my period and my range found for part 
uh, 1, so my range is always found from minus a to positive a. Looking then at part 2, sketch the function. So this is just asking us, I'd say, just keep it very, very sketchy. <laughs> um, let's just draw out my coordinate graph, something like this. And the highest value there I'm going is 110 root 2. Again, that's my amplitude. And if I'm including my range, it would bring me down to negative 110 root 2. A sine function will always go through the origin. And my period is 1 over 60. So basically, let's just sketch a sine function going through the origin, up and down, up and down, something like that. And we know, let's just mark a bit of information on it, that from here to here, that's my range, which we know. And my period then is going, let's just say from here to here, which is one over uh, 60. So where it crosses the axis again here, that coordinate there would be one over 60 if I'm starting at the origin of zero. Uh, I think that's enough, that's all we need. I've marked in my range and I've marked in my period. Looking at part three, use the formula, the function for volt, to find the voltage when T is equal to 6.17. Uh, so that's fairly uh, straightforward. So my function is VT is equal to 110 root two sine of 120 pi times t. All I'm doing here is I'm subbing in 6.67 for t, so the voltage at time 6.67 is equal to 110 root 2 times sine of 120. Just be careful here, it's calculator work, just maybe put them in brackets just to make life a bit easier for yourself, uh, 6.67. So again, just be careful with your brackets on your calculator, perhaps. So voltage at time 6.67 is equal to 147.94967 on my calculator. Anyway, give your answer to two decimal points. So that's 147.95 volts. Okay, that's part B done. Uh, looking now at B part IV. Find one value for T when the voltage is 110 volts. Give your answer in the form of a fraction. So let's just put down our formula again here for voltage. It's written as 110 root two sine uh, 120 pi T. Now they want us to solve for T when the voltage is 110. So I'm gonna let this equal to 110. I can divide both sides by 110. That's the first thing I'm going to do, divide by 110 on both sides. So that's giving me uh, root two sine 120 pi times t is equal to one. So 110 divided by 110 is one. Dividing both sides by root two is giving me sine 120 pi t is equal to 1 over root 2. To get 120 pi t on its own, I'm going to find the sine inverse. So therefore, 120 pi times t is equal to sine inverse of 1 over root 2. So in order to get rid of the sine, I need to find the sine inverse. And the sine inverse of 1 over root 2 is giving me in radians 1 over 4 pi. So I've set my calculator there to radians because it's dealing with pi in the formula. Now to get t on its own, I'm basically just dividing both sides by 120 pi. So that's 1 over 4 pi divided by 120 pi, which simplifies to t equals 1 over 480, and it's talking seconds. So that's my answer, one over 480 seconds. 
Again, just be careful there with your calculator. This part here might sound a little bit difficult, but just use your, your knowledge there of brackets. You can call it 0 0.25 pi if you want, instead of working to fractions. And the final part, V. Find a rate of change of voltage when T is equal to 2 seconds. Rate of change there, first of all, to be drawing your attention to uh, calculus and differentiation. So we need to find the derivative of our function. So let's just, first of all, put back down our formula for the function which is written as 110 root 2 sine 120 pi times t. Now it's in terms of t and I need to differentiate this using the chain rule. So the, the derivative of uh, v for t is going to give me um, 110. So we write our constant 110 root 2 again. Uh, differentiate sine is written as cos 120 pi times t and I times that then by the derivative of what's inside the bracket which is um, going to give me what 120 pi so I'm finding the derivative of 120 pi times t sorry it's not dx it's going to be for dt isn't it because we're differentiating with respect to t so that's 110 root 2 cos 120 pi times t and differentiating 120 pi t is 120 pi. So that's my derivative of my function. Now the question that was asking me to solve that for uh, t equals 2 seconds. So we're going to let t equals uh, 2 in this case which is going to give me uh, subbing in 2 for t, so 110 root 2 times cos of 120 pi. Again, just use brackets here just on your calculator to be sure it works out for you. Multiply by 120 pi. Set your calculator in radians as well. We don't want to be in degrees because it's in terms of pi. So 58646.05. So what's that? It's asking us to the nearest unit. So that's 56, sorry, 58,646 volts, uh, what, per second? It's talking about volts in seconds. So 58,646 volts per second is the rate of change when time is at two seconds. Okay, that is question nine complete.